everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I thought I'd give you a little tour of some of the plants I've got up here. I'm having a pretty massive rearrange at the moment, hence why they are just absolutely everywhere. But I thought I would take you through some of them, show you some updates, give you just a little general plant tour. But yes, I hope you enjoy it and let's get into it. So as you can see, it's pretty far from being neat and organized at the moment. Everything's just kind of been shoved over here for the purposes of this video. And so that afterwards I can go through, give everything a mass water, start my fertilizing for the season, which is really, really exciting. And yeah, just kind of have a bit of a sort out, but I'm gonna try and take you through as many of these ones as I can. I've got a load of seedlings and stuff like that over there. Loads of propagations over on the other side, which I'm not gonna go through today. I will save them for a different video. I'm hoping to set up a propagation room at some point soon when I move so I will keep you in the loop with that but let's let's start down here so my little varicosum that the last time I showed it to you was in my grow cabinets which I will give you some updates on it's doing so well um has got spider mites again or what I mean did about a week ago haven't seen any since but is pretty much in isolation as you can see these newer leaves look absolutely fine but again, it was it was the original ones that I saw it on before. You can see the damage there, and I have treated it. But for the meantime, it's it's not going back in the grow cabinet, and I'm just kind of keeping it as far away from the rest of my collection as I possibly possibly can. But yeah, God, they're such a bugger. They really are. Um, but yes, yeah, so then I've got a euphorbia here. These are the ones I'm kind of starting with. The ones that probably need the most attention. This one, as you can see, just needs these bits here taken off and needs a bit of TLC, really needs a good water. It hasn't been watered in a few months, I don't think. I really don't water my euphorbias that often. Um, that one's also been downstairs with me and hasn't had a lot of light. So that's where we're at with that at the moment. Yeah, I'm literally starting with the ones that aren't looking great. It's gonna get better as we go on. And here is my big yucca plant, which again has been downstairs in my basement with me for the past kind of, I think about a year now. And although it's been under grow lights and it has done well, you can just kind of tell it's not looking quite as kind of full and upright as you'd want it to be. And at this time of year, bearing in mind they are highlight plants, I thought I'll bring it up here, give it some sun. Um, it also had aphids a while ago. I think I posted about that on Instagram. I'm pretty sure I did on my story. And touch wood, they're not back and it has bounced back really well, but I'm just kind of monitoring it and making sure everything is fine. But yes, that's that one. And then down here, I've got my, I'm pretty sure it's a blue matillo cactus, which is the one that I got in my first episode of my garden center tour UK and it's doing well. I mean, it's a very slow grower. It hasn't really done a huge amount since I got it to be completely honest. I have still, I know I mentioned those little markings there, which were either kind of fungal or pest related and I've treated it for both. And basically there's been no more and no signs of pests. So I'm thinking it's fine. And behind it, I've got another euphorbia. I've got my massive one over here that I'll show you in a minute as well. I think this little one here, I think this is a blue matillo cactus as well, but I can't remember. It's one that I've had for years and years and years and definitely haven't given enough love to. I really need to kind of get back on it with this little one because I've repotted it very recently and it was so root bound. I mean, I got that when I was kind of first, first getting into house plants and I don't know if anyone else does this except I just bought like a load of mini cacti and was like, ah, right now I've got loads of plants and just forgot about them pretty much. But moving on, I've got my variegated euphorbia, which, oh, I mean, just look how beautiful that is. It is just absolutely stunning. And again, it's a plant that requires literally <laughs> I mean, barely any care. It's really, really happy in bright light. So it absolutely loves it up here. And it hasn't been watered. I think I watered it about three weeks ago, but for some reason, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it needs repotting. The quality of soil that it's in, it just means that when you water it sometimes it just doesn't absorb like I almost have to kind of poke lots of holes in the soil for the water to actually be able to sink down and obviously that's kind of a sign of soil that's either way too compact and needs a little bit more aeration or 
just not a great quality soil but the plant in itself seems really happy and I'm just absolutely in love with it so yeah that's that one and then I'm pretty sure this is a prickly pear but if anyone can confirm that that would be great again this is another one that I've had since I first started getting into houseplants, I got it, I think from TK Maxx or something like that. Wilco's, that's where I got it, Wilco's. And it was about that big and really needs a water. Um, and now it's really, really huge. So yeah, love it. It's not one that I kind of admire as much as some of my others, just because I've kind of got so used to it, if that makes sense. I've had it for, oh my God, five years now, maybe? Something like that. Um, but then on the other hand, this one here, this is my big euphorbia. And oh my goodness, I love this plant so, so, so much. I'll sit back a bit so you can see the size of her now. I'm so sorry about all of the crap everywhere, by the way. I'm aware that it's messy, but this wasn't meant to be a, a beautiful houseplant tour. When I move, then you will have a full houseplant tour and it will all be beautiful and it'll all be nice. But for now, you've got the pest stuff and the bottles and the diluted water and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yes, so my big euphorbia, absolutely love her. I'll pop a clip in of what she looks like, I think probably about this time last year because she was, she was about there. And honestly, she's grown an insane amount. These ones can be such slow growers, but yeah, whatever, whatever I've been doing has been working well. I mean, which has pretty much just been leaving her and watering her maybe once every three, four weeks and giving her lots of light, but she's very happy. And then moving along to the ones that are a little bit happier, I've got my white princess philodendron here, which is just doing amazing, amazingly at the moment. I'm so proud of her. As you guys know, this time last year, if you've been watching my videos before, she was literally a one leaf cutting plant. And now she is just absolutely ginormous she's huge so yeah she's got a lovely new leaf on furling here as well which i know you're not meant to peek at but i can never help myself so yeah she's got a lovely new leaf coming there and i, I want to say at the moment she's probably giving me about a new leaf a month or something like that i've had to tie her with string at the moment which i know isn't particularly attractive i started with the kind of jute string stuff which looks a lot nicer and i'm hoping to replace that at some point but yeah, she's doing really, really, really well. And then oh, I've got I've got these little ones here as well. I've got a tiny little ZZ plant here, which I I divided this plant fairly recently just because it was packed into I think about a six centimeter pot and there was three stems. So I divided it and I put them all into them like little individual pots. And yes, I've also been doing lots of pot making at the moment. I did make a video on that recently and this one, not quite sure what I think about this one, to be honest, that was one of my first ones and now I'm like, oh, I hate it. But um, but yeah, I've been doing lots of kind of creative pot making you things. And then, oh for goodness sake, what's this one called? Can't remember, I'll put the name on the screen. Another one that I've had for ages and is probably in desperate need of a repot, but yeah, it's just kind of, it's just kind of there. It's super low maintenance and, doesn't require a load of attention, but bird yes. And then here I've got my pink princess, which again, similar to my white princess, has just gone absolutely crazy recently. I mean, I don't know, like for scale, I don't really know if you can kind of get how big those leaves are. I mean, even I know this one hasn't got huge, like isn't hugely variegated, but the size of the leaves, and again, this one was a one leaf cutting. If you look at them down there, if you look at the size of the leaves there, and then you compare it to the sort of thing she's pushing out now, it's just absolutely crazy. And although this leaf hasn't hardened up yet, it's got some really beautiful variegation, which I'm hoping is gonna kind of be a little bit more prominent, especially since the weather is so gorgeous at the moment. So yes. And then up here, I've got my Hoya Crinkleate. I've shown you it before. I've got a few of these plants just because I love them. I stopped them back when my shop was open and they're just beautiful. Oh, plane going over. Sorry if you can hear that. Um, but yeah, really beautiful, really lovely plants. So easy going as well. We love an easy going plant. And then here is my Monstera Minima, which again, I got as a cutting. And I think I've probably had for about, I want to say about three, four months now. But when I got it, it was all the way down there. And there was only kind of the leaves, the little leaves that are here at the moment. And it is just doing insanely well like it's almost coming off the moss pole I'm sure that wasn't unfurled yesterday it's almost actually kind of completely coming off the moss pole now and 
I'm kind of thinking when I move to my new place, I might just not replace the moss pole for now, kind of let it climb up the wall, but I don't know. What do you think about that? I want to do some really cool kind of planty styling things so that they don't all just look like this. But um, that's, that's a thought that I'm having. And yeah, it's just, it's a beautiful plant. I love it. I'm going to say that about all of them. Whenever I watch my videos back after I film them, I'm always like, oh God, Claire, you say that every plant is beautiful, but I really mean it. So... So yeah, I'm sorry if it gets annoying, but I, I truly do believe that the ones I own are very, very gorgeous plants. Oh, I thought I just snapped a leaf off then, but it's just a little bit there, which can go. Um, and then here, this is, a lot of you have asked me about this one and that one as well, actually. This is just a heart leaf philodendron. It's, I mean, it's huge. It's absolutely massive. It needs a really, really, really good prune. As you can see, some of its leaves have got a little bit of damage on them. And I think partly it's because Yoli's tail will constantly whack it. And also I think bits like this, there you can see, I think is probably malnourishment. It is being fertilised, but if the pot it's in actually isn't that big when you look at the amount of vineage it's got. So I think what I'm probably going to do with this one quite soon is just take some cuttings, definitely repot it and just kind of check the state of the roots. I really don't enjoy repotting plants that are this kind of big and viney because obviously if like if you are to snap a root from a growth point up there and often they're not very substantial it can be a little bit of a nightmare and you have to kind of make billions of cuts and try and propagate it but that's what I'm gonna do if anyone fancies a video on that let me know because I'll happily get the camera rolling and do kind of a repot and chat at the same time because I feel like that's gonna be a little bit of a mission um but yeah right let's do the ones over this side and then we'll do the table oh the sun's coming around then we'll do the table then i'll do my cabinet and then we'll do the other bits um but here i've got my bird of paradise which if i'm trying to think the last time i showed you this obviously this is kind of this is where i film a lot of my videos nowadays just because the light's good and my plants can be behind me i did make a bird of paradise care video and both of these leaves have popped up since i made that and i think God, I'm so bad with remembering when times were, but I think it was about three months ago, three, four, maybe five months ago that I did that, but it's doing amazingly. I'm actually tempted to repot it at some point soon. I do just love it in, oh, ow, sorry. Oh, I'm caught on my euphorbia. There we get right. Now that I've showed you that, I might just move it out of the way a little bit because I can see that continuing to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I love the pot it's in at the moment, but I'm thinking that it's probably going to be ready. I know they don't mind being root bound compared to some other plants, but I'm thinking because it's giving me so much new growth and it's really, really tall now as well. I'm probably going to have to bite the bullet and do the repot at some point. At the moment, I've just got it kind of stood on a plant pot because it raises it up. And for the background of my videos, it looks nicer if it's a little bit taller, but I'm hoping that soon I won't have to do that and it'll kind of be able to carry itself a bit more or... I just invest in a plant stand. I could just do that. That would probably be the better option. Um, do you want to see this? Probably not. I've got loads of banana water here that <laughs> bless my friend actually made for me. Um, I use it all the time as fertilizer. Uh, I've made a video on that if anyone's interested, but yeah, he has made me loads of banana water and I use it like a lot at the moment, which is great. And then I've got some Provanto, which is something that I think every plant parent should have. It is necessary. It's not the most attractive stuff. And then just some distilled water, which is great for propagating and really good for sensitive plants as well. So yeah, I've got that all shoved down there at the moment. I'm hoping soon to get my organization, my plant stuff kind of looking really pretty and neat and organized and all that sort of stuff. But at the moment, it's kind of just shoved in corners. Um, right, moving on. This one is, oh God, what's it called? I think it's Lepismium, Lepismium bolivianum. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Again, with all of these, I'll put the names on the screen, but Lepismium bolivianum, I think is what it's called. I always just call it the head of hair plant. And also when I was doing my making pots video, some people were saying, how do you go about doing drainage trays? And this one actually does have a clip on, or oh, you can see it's actually come detached, clip on, clip off uh, drainage tray. So I just use the really thick rope for the top bit and then 
for the bottom I just did that separately so I can still take it off and let it drain between waterings and stuff like that but yeah I absolutely adore that plant it's just it's so unusual and I know it's not particularly rare but it's one that was on my wish list for such a long time I found it at um oh uh pretty cactus plants on Etsy is where I got that plant and I just absolutely adore it it's gorgeous I love it and then this one here behind oh the soil on the chair um this massive one with a towel underneath it I'll explain in a minute but this is my massive variegated monstera which has just done absolutely amazingly this year it is oh my god it's one of my favorite plants it will always be one of my favorite plants even though the variegation on some of the leaves isn't great it's also you probably can't tell yet but I can feel in the in the petiole it's getting ready to push out a new leaf and I'm a little bit scared because it's getting to the point where I think I'm gonna have to chop it soon and I really don't want to it's just so lovely as it is but I think the time may have come um I was gonna say as well the reason the reason that it's on a towel at the moment is because the pot that it's in is actually just like a waste paper bin because I couldn't find one that I liked. Also, don't worry, it is away from the wires. I know it's a bit weird. Um, but for some reason, whenever I water it in the waste paper bin, probably because it's not meant to be a pot, but it kind of comes out all black and smushy and horrible. So I've got a dog towel under it at the moment. And at some point I'll figure out a better system. But yeah, that is my giant that I'm obsessed with. And now let's, let's back out of here. Ah. Oh. Okay, little bit squished, little bit squished. So, so here is um, Pilia peperomioides. This is one that I propagated a few times recently, a couple of times in my video that I made on this plant and a couple of times since then as well. And all of them are doing well. I've potted one up that I took cutting wise in my video in my grow cabinet at the moment. So I'll show you that when we get there. But it's just such a cheeky, fun, lovely plant. I absolutely adore it. It's really easy to care for. It's just great. And then here I've got a little variegated monstera that I was propagating in water probably for way too long, if I'm being completely honest. Like the roots had started to go a little bit smushy, so I treated them with hydrogen peroxide. And it's been potted up for about a week and a half, two weeks now. And... Mm, I feel like I can see a slight tint of yellow, like it might just be because it's kind of adjusting to its new environment in the pot, but I'm not sure it's gonna make it. I don't know. I mean, it's got some good roots and then it's got this area root here that was doing brilliantly when it was in water and I'm not, I don't know. I'm kind of playing this one by ear and just taking it as it comes and hoping that it'll be fine. I also decorated this pot and the really cool thing with decorating terracotta pots, I just got these, um, metallic pens off Amazon and the really cool thing with decorating these pots is when you first water because the terracotta absorbs loads of the water the pattern completely goes and then when the soil kind of starts to dry out then you notice the pattern reappearing so I don't know if that would be kind of a useful way for some people to tell when their plants need a drink again or something like that but yeah I thought that was pretty cool so fingers crossed for that plant I'll let you know I'll keep you updated um and then here I've got my Ficus elastica tinnicky, which I've shown you many times before. It's a plant I've had for quite a while. I originally got it in as stock when my shop was open and I fell in love with it. So I ended up keeping it. It's just such a beautiful plant. This one has had both thrips and spider mites in the time that I've had it. And there is still some damage on some of the leaves that you can see, which I mean, to be honest, doesn't really bother me. It still looks healthy and happy. Oh God, I'm burning up now. I'm gonna have to get through this quicker than I thought because it's it's very warm in here. Um, and then down here, I have shown you these ones fairly recently, so I won't spend too much time on them, but these are the ones that I found in the skip and took back and rehabbed. Uh, made a video on that as well, if you wanna see the full process, but obviously they're turning into really lovely little plants now. They are Thormatophyllum bipinatifidums, I think is the Latin name. I did ID them and that's what it came up with. Um, but they're split leaf philodendrons basically. And yeah, they're doing really, really well. I'm so proud of those plants and very excited to see what they turn into. Um, but next I've got my smaller Anthurium clarinavium, which, oh, it's just so beautiful. These, I mean, both these leaves here, are fairly, when I say fairly new leaves, within the last six months leaves, I chopped the whole thing completely back after my summer thrips experience. And now it's actually given me an inflorescence, which is amazing. 
And my one up there, which I will take you to shortly, has also got an inflorescence. And that one is, oops, sorry, it's a dog. And um, that one is in the receptive phase. And this one hasn't quite moved into it yet. So basically, when you see lots of kind of blobs of uh, sap or whatever it is, that means it's in the female kind of reproductive stage, it's receptive, that's when you can pollinate it. And that one is, and this one hasn't quite got there. So I'm hoping that that one moves into the male phase quicker and I might be able to pollinate this one this time around. If not, it's gonna be a case of collecting pollen and hopefully pollinating them next time. Although this plant, I'm not quite sure is big enough to be able to take it anyway, because it does require like quite a lot of energy. And as you can see, it's a fairly small plant, but I will, I'll keep you updated with all of that. I'm just kind of speaking my mind as we go, but I will keep you up to date. Um, and then this one here is one that I got fairly recently. I think this was episode two of my Houseplant Tour UK. Yeah, it was. Um, and it's a Streptocarpus Pretty Turtle. I'm 99% sure that's what it is. And as you can see, there's been a few more breakages. It is just, I mean, it's a beautiful plant, but it is very, very breakable. And anytime I kind of put something next to it, I'll look around and see that it's been knocked and it's snapped. And it's such a shame because, yeah, it probably is the sort of plant that would be great for kind of decorative purposes, far away from other things in an area where it could be appreciated and looked at and probably not have stuff put next to it too much so yeah i need to rethink that but i do absolutely adore that plant and then here i've got my philodendron brazil which i mean is looking okay i don't think she's looking as vibrant as she could be i think the time is definitely the time has definitely come for fertilizing and yeah she's not looking bad i just feel like you know like when you know your plants and you're like nope you could be doing better I am just kind of thinking that about her at the moment, but maybe if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. I'm hoping to get her trailing more this summer, kind of pumping out lots of new growth. And then again, when I move to my new place, I'll be able to have her kind of hanging down and looking really lovely. But yes, then here I've got my Philodendron Ernestii, which is such a, I mean, I just love this plant. I absolutely adore it. Its leaves are just beautiful. They just they almost don't look real they're so 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 perfect and I staked her recently I wasn't gonna I was gonna put her on a moss pole but then I just had this lying around and I was like I'll do it to just kind of straighten out the stem because she'd started leaning quite a lot and actually has done really well since I've done it and this leaf has only been unfurled for probably about five six days and now it's kind of hardened up and then as you can see there's a new one coming here as well so I think for now maybe I'll leave it and maybe kind of chop her, propagate her um, at some point. Also, I showed you the other day in another video, but I tried to make her a self-watering pot. I decided to pot her completely in pond. And you can kind of see the little reservoir at the bottom. I just kind of did a DIY version of the Lachiza thing because, because it's cheaper and it seems to be working. She seems to be happy. She's been in pond uh, maybe four weeks now, something like that. And yeah, seems to be doing well. So fingers crossed it stays that way. Um, and then here I've got my little variegated aloe, which again, in the same video that I spoke about earlier, about a year ago, I showed you when she was, oh, she was tiny. Again, if I can find a clip, I'll pop it in so that you can see how well she's done since then. But she is a proper, a proper plant now. You wouldn't even think she was just a little propagation. She's doing very, very well and loving this warmer weather. So yep, I'm going to happily leave her there on the windowsill and she will do well I hope and then just a little jade plant cutting that I've recently potted up again as I say I will do a separate propagation tour I've got a load of kind of uh, prop boxes seedlings cuttings all that sort of stuff that I will definitely show you guys at some point soon but I'm really hoping to set up this propagation room so I'd really love to wait until it gets to that stage so I can kind of give you the full experience the full experience you know what I mean um so yeah most of these are kind of just full full plants and then oh, before the sun wipes me out completely this is my alocasia portadora i think it is um yeah i need to open the door i'm absolutely boiling oh there we go uh, uh. um yeah alocasia portadora which is uh one of my big ones and it's just loving this warmer weather look at all that new growth down there i mean it's absolutely crazy this one was a new leaf from about three weeks ago I think and usually over the winter months I'll get a new leaf and maybe 
five, six weeks later, I might get another one. And this one has already got a new leaf coming out of that same one that's still relatively new. So it's loving the sunshine. It's probably not going to do great in the actual direct sun. But as I say, I've just put them here for this video and then I'll figure out where I'm actually going to put them in the long run. But yes, and then I've got another alocasia here. This is my alocasia poly, which I've had for ages and absolutely love. That leaf is just so, so, so gorgeous. And yeah, it's again, loving, loving the warmer weather. So many of my plants, well, I mean, tropical plants, and I guess it's just kind of quite obvious, but whenever the weather gets warmer, so long as you counteract the extra heat with lots and lots and lots of humidity, they are just, I mean, in their prime, like all of these ones here, especially, I'll take you through my cabinet babies shortly, but all of the ones with extra heat and extra humidity have just gone crazy recently. But yeah, that one is doing well and I love it. And then let's work from, from back to front. So this is a Philodendron Golden Dragon. This is one of the ones that I got in my Green Spaces ID um, order that they sent me. And it's doing, oh yeah, it's doing really well. It's It's got a little bit of browning on this leaf here, but again, this is the plant that really didn't have any issues at all. And I was quite surprised to be completely honest because the massive long journey from Indonesia when the weather hadn't been good and as you would have seen if you saw that video quite a lot of the others did have issues so this one's doing absolutely brilliantly um again new little growth point there and then let's let's come back to the front my philodendron milano chrysum milano chrysum that was the one that was really badly affected by thrips took multiple cuttings propagated it this one has i mean this is my biggest one from the cuttings i took so far uh, and I originally put it in my grow cabinet when I set it up a few weeks ago and <laughs> literally within the space of a week it outgrew it and this leaf was a new one and then it's also now got that new one coming up here which is just absolutely insane. It's doing very 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 well but it's such a beautiful plant and I'm just so happy it made it because I really was so unsure about this plant. Um, the other ones touch or... Oh, oh the wood have also made it but this is the one that's doing the best so yeah that's that's where we're at with that one and then this one this is a syngonium obviously but i again can't remember the exact variety and i'm not sure i even knew the exact variety when i got it um if anybody knows then do leave me a comment down below and let me know i know it kind of looks like a white butterfly but i'm pretty certain it's not got a white butterfly over there so I don't think it is um but yeah if anybody knows do let me know um and this here I was going to say it looks fungal I used an old a really old misting spray thing that I had and it was a bit kind of crusty around the bottom it almost looked like a bit salty and I did do it on this plant and I think that is probably why um but I'll keep an eye on that to make sure it's nothing more sinister like a fungal disease or anything like that um, 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 right, so moving back, this is the Philodendron Gloriosum that again I got from Green Spaces ID that I potted in the trough and I love this plant so much, it's doing so well. Again, that's the a little update on the new leaf that it came with when it was still unfurling and it's just looking absolutely beautiful. I do know that this trough is way too big for the actual plant. I mean, what I've done at the moment, I've put a little line of like a plastic bag in between that and the next bit. So when it starts to grow along, then I can kind of pull that out and give it more space. But in the meantime, it'll mean that I'm kind of containing the moisture in that area, if that makes sense. So I'm not overwatering it because if I was just saturating all the soil, then its little root system wouldn't be able to absorb all of the water. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then I've got my Anthurium vicii here, which gave me this new leaf most recently. I think it's probably about three months ago. And I know they're not the fastest growers in the world, but I think just because within two months of me having this plant, it had given me two new leaves. I'm kind of a bit like, ah, why are you not doing anything now? Give me more. Um, but I know I just need to be patient, but it is, it was a wishlist plant of mine for so long and I love it and it's so pretty and I know it's still quite a baby at the moment, but God, when this one, if this one starts producing inflorescences like my Clarinerviums here, I will just be over the moon because I would love to cross pollinate these plants so much, so much. Um, but yes, and then... Oh, 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 this is the one that I couldn't remember the name to last time. And again, I'm probably going to have to put it on the screen. I want to say Ace Cananthus, but I know it's not. 
um, begins with an A, it's got a nan in there. That's all I remember. God, I'm awful. Variety, party time, that's, that's all I remember off the top of my head. But yes, name will be going in, but yeah, again, giving me some lovely colour on it at the moment. I think the last time I showed you it, it was none of this top section was there. And again, this started in my grow cabinet over there, but outgrew it very, very quickly. So yeah, you can see all of these new bits coming in here. Um, and Johnny, who I got it off, who's the bearded plantaholic, did say keep chopping and propagating to kind of keep it nice and full and like keep it going. And I haven't done that yet. So I'm thinking I'll probably do that fairly soon although I kind of don't want to cut it because it's so lovely how it is but yeah I don't know I I might do that I might do that we'll see and then I've got a little Gollum Jade Crassula Ovata down here in another I mean pretty much all of these are now handmade pots or revamped pots um but yeah showed you that one so many times really gorgeous I'm gonna take some cuttings of this soon I've actually been doing and again as I say I'll keep propagating for another video but I've taken so many cuttings this morning um, and I really kind of want to get my propagations up and running again. I've, I've sold and swapped a load and I'm also going to a plant swap next month. So I want to have loads of stuff for that. So yeah, I need to kind of get on building up my collection again. Um, I know that sounds excessive when it's like this, but you know what I mean? Um, so yes, that is that one. And then I've got my Marble Queen Pothos here, which is a relatively new addition. Uh, I just love it. I just absolutely love it. I love the variegation. I love that it's a really fast growing plant. I love that it's not rare or expensive, but it just looks so lovely. Um, yeah, if you can hear me kind of panting, it's because I'm very warm and I've got all the windows and doors open and it's just, whew, honestly, I think like I'm looking at the temperature in my grow cabinet right now and it's almost at 30 degrees Celsius, which is very 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 hot and i'm basically in a massive greenhouse here so bear with me i'm also stupidly wearing a jumper and joggers i don't know why i'm doing that but but here we are um here i have got a variegated monstera that i potted up uh again i think within the next uh, the next three months the last three months doing very well gave me this lovely new leaf which hasn't got quite as much variegation as i was hoping this one gave me a lot of hope and actually the stem doesn't look as white now it did look very very white before this one came out but we will see I'm not going to be too upset if I have to chop this plant back a bit because this is kind of a bit of a a bit of a trial one it's not from my big baby there so we'll keep going with that and see how we get on it's also got this other little thing growing in the soil with it which I'm not quite sure I always used to pick out other bits and to be honest now I just leave them I heard that apparently it's really good if you have other plants growing there as well because it just means the soil's really fertile and nice and good and full of nutrients so we're embracing whatever that little plant is if anyone could ID it that would be great uh, and then I could say I had another plant who knows um, and then here I've just got an aloe vera which uh, doesn't need a lot of explanation it's a really nice plant it's in desperate need of a repot so I do need to do that soon um, I think it's in a 10 centimeter pot or something at the moment I don't know if you can kind of see it's a lot smaller than the actual kind of cube pot that it's in um so I really do need to do that soon um but yeah had that one for about a year and I really love it and then here I've got my very dusty bile marks which yeah needs a really seriously good wipe over this one has been downstairs and I mean, you can't really see dust as much downstairs and now it's in sunlight. I'm like, oh God, it needs a good wipe over. Um, but on the whole, I'd say it's doing well. It's given me lots of new growth recently and that's actually without that much light. Like this is a fairly, fairly low light plant. It prefers bright and direct, but can absolutely cope with lower. Excuse all the mess, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, it also is in desperate need of a water. You can see it's quite, quite wilty there. Um, but that's that one. I have all the faith it's going to bounce back. Um, and also, somebody recently was asking me on their bell marks, their uh, variegated bell marks, whether or not they had scale. And they sent me pictures of this. And oh, what is it called? Basically, it's not scale. It's totally normal. And I mean, if it looks like this, obviously, if you've got things stuck to the stems, then it could be scale. I will put some information and the name in. I think it's... I'm not going to try and guess because I'll come up with something stupid, but basically it's totally, totally normal. It's just a way of stuff passing through the plant. Happens naturally and does not mean you've got pests. Does not mean that you should assume that you haven't if you have got this, because obviously it can be scale. But 
on the whole, it's nothing to worry about with these types of plants. Um, but yeah, so right, moving on round. I've got another variegated monstera. This one wasn't doing brilliantly a few months ago. Um, I It had thrips, it was part of the one that was infested. And I thought at the time, do I completely chop it up? And I decided to take a cutting there, as you can see, and had this lovely new growth point come up here. And I just thought the variegation on these ones was so beautiful. It's so kind of marbled and dappled and so as soon as that started growing, I was like, oh, I was like, I kind of want to keep this section and keep going with the main plant as well. So I'm air layering it at the moment and it's got a fantastic, I don't know if you can see, can you see in there? Yeah, you can kind of see it poking up here. Um, a really fantastic, yeah, there you go, um, uh, growth from the node coming up. And so I'm hoping when I chop it now, it will do really well. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep it going and see See how it goes and when the time comes probably when this is kind of you know in a month or so when this is hardened up a bit and it's a little bit more mature then i'll probably transfer that section completely to sphagnum moss take it away from the mother plant and maybe keep doing the same thing but i'll i'll see how i feel i'll see how this one bounces back but it's doing a hell of a lot better than it was again i know it needs a moss pole just got a stake at the moment but i will sort that out i need to do a massive plant chores video really because I'm saying I've got all this stuff to do and I'm always, whenever I think about it, I'm always like, hmm, what do I have to do? And actually, I've got a lot. So yes, that is one thing on my list. Um, and then here I've got Syngonium White Butterfly. This is one that, again, I got fairly recently. Uh, it's a really lovely plant, really like it. Uh, it's probably not appreciating all the bright, hot weather in here, so I should probably move this maybe even downstairs with me for a while. But yeah, not a massive update on that one, just because it is... Uh, yeah, fairly recent, hasn't changed much since you last saw it. Right, this has all changed a lot. I know I only set it up about three weeks ago, but this, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of changes in here. Um, it's warm in here as well. It's warm and the air is sticky and yes. Um, so this is what it's looking like. Uh, let's, let's start from the bottom this time. So as you can see, I've still got my big Levoy humidifier in there, which I'm not running constantly just because it's it produces too much for the amount of space that it's in. And I do really need to get a humidifier system set up on one of the middle shelves or something like that. But what I've been doing at the moment is before uh, before bed every night, I've been putting it on for 10 minutes and I've just been letting the air kind of circulate. I've got my fan down there at the moment, but again, some days I move it up to the middle shelf and kind of just let all the air flow. Um, and that seems to be working really, really well. What I actually did this morning as well is I just, I mean, I keep a lot of kind of propagations and stuff like that in there anyway, because it helps to boost the humidity, but I just filled these with boiling water, left them in there. And because these aren't kind of flush with the edge, because there are gaps at the front of the back, all the humidity just kind of travels up and everything is kept really, really happy. Um, but yeah, so that's how I'm doing it at the moment. And although it's not a long-term solution, I'm not that fussed about it at the moment. Again, when I move out, I think I'll probably start kind of being like, right, okay, how can I make this a more permanent solution? But right now I'm fairly happy with it. Um, so let's start. So I've got a little Peperomia Hope here, which is a really gorgeous plant. As you can see, oh, sorry about the plane. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of plants. You'll see as I go up, a lot of these plants in kind of mini pots. And I've basically just been going a little bit crazy with my pot decoration at the moment, just because I'm, I'm getting overexcited about moving and I'm thinking I can put little ones around on my windowsills and it will look really nice and I can finally get my plant collection kind of looking gorgeous because it's, I mean, it's always looked gorgeous to me, but I'd like people to walk in and be like, oh, wow, your plants are so cool. Uh, this is me being very sad, I am aware, but um, but yes, that's, that's my thought process on that. I thought it would look nice. Uh, and then I chopped this Hoyer up recently for my Hoyer video and... You can see some of the little nodes, oh, yeah, have started kind of swelling a bit. And can I take it out? I know I said I wasn't going to in this video. I'll save that for propagations. I'll save that just because I don't want to disrupt it because it's only been in there for just over a week, I think. But as you can see, there is some movement there. It's doing well. Um, and then I've got another little Philodendron Melanochrism here, which is in pawn, again, in kind of a DIY self-watering pot and seems happy. This is one that I only potted up fairly recently, um, was another Thrips child. And um, 
I lost the mother leaf on this one unfortunately but it's doing well it seems happy so I am happy about that and then I've got a satin pothos here skindapsis syndapsis not quite sure which way you're meant to say it. I hear some people say syndapsis but I've always said skindapsis um, which again is just doesn't need a lot to say about it but it's just such a beautiful plant it's got such velvety sparkly gorgeous gorgeous leaves so yeah love that plant um, this little one down here is one of my Anthurium clarinavium seedlings that I potted that, I don't know, it's just not, I mean, it's it's doing something and you can see it's got a new little leaf coming up there, but it's not doing as well as the others. And oh my goodness, I will show you one of the others when we get to the top of this. It is doing amazingly and I'm so proud of it. But yeah, that one I'm just kind of bearing with and hoping that the heat, humidity, extra light in here is going to help keep it happy. But I'll, I'll keep you updated. And then I've got little Peperomia Rosso, which again was another propagation, which again, in the time it's been in the cabinet has done super, super, super well. Um, again, I won't say too much about it because I know I've spoken about it recently, but I'm really happy with how it's doing. And also I know the last time I showed you it, it was looking a little bit kind of crispy and dried out. And since I've had it in here, if you watch my last video, my setting up my greenhouse cabinet tour, then you'll be able to see the difference. It's looking so much more vibrant and kind of just healthy and lovely. So yeah, really happy with how it's doing. Um, and then, so here I've got my Hoya Croniana Splash, which again, since I've had it in here, has really, really, really just kind of thrived. You can see new growth points coming up here. Oh, the camera's not pointing to it, just here. And there's another little bit there as well, which like this plant was pretty much dormant before I had it in the cabinet. So I'm so happy with how it's doing. Um, and then behind that, I've got a teeny tiny, this is a, like a fairly recent propagation um, that I put it up. This is a Peperomia pepper spot, I think it is. And yeah, it's, it's doing really well in here. It seems really happy. Um, it's got such gorgeous, thick, succulent leaves. I really do love this plant. I just love Peperomia, but this one seems very happy in here. Um, and then this I only potted up a, about three, four days ago, Philodendron Silver Sword. Oh dear, the heat's got to my head and I can't think properly. I think it's a Philodendron Silver Sword. Um, and yeah, it's got a nice little root system on it. So I'm hoping that like helping it to kind of adjust in this environment is going to do it good. I mean, these ones down here aren't the prettiest in my cabinet. These are kind of the ones that I feel need to be here. All of them need to be here, but these are the ones that kind of are in desperate need of a little bit of TLC. And I think that one will kind of help, help be helped to get off to a good start in this environment. So yes. And then next to it, I've got Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is just in moss and perlite at the moment. Uh, it's not rooted at the moment, as far as I know. It's only been in here for five days maybe and so I'd be very surprised if it started to do anything yet but I mean it might have done I'm not willing to take it out yet and have a look though because I want to wait until I can kind of see some roots and hopefully it'll take it's got a nice node on it so yeah I do love that plant and I'd be very 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 happy to have another one I know some people are really against having duplicates of plants but I personally if I love a plant I could have like 10 of that plant because I can just appreciate it even more, if that makes any sense at all. Oh no, a fly just flew in there. Get out. Where did you go? Oh, I've lost it. Um, right, moving on. Let's hope fly doesn't come back. So yeah, this, this is an Alocasia fry deck, which uh, at the moment just looks like a stump. And actually, I'm not even sure that is a fry deck. I'm not sure what that is. Um, this is one that I got, Few months ago and i mean alocasias don't always travel well especially when the weather's a bit colder and this one although it arrived looking beautiful within a couple of days the leafed yellow didn't kind of gone but luckily it does have this bit underneath that was savable so i'm sure at some point it's going to give me a lovely leaf from that bit but yeah that i mean maybe that's just a very 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 young fry deck leaf that i'm kind of not as familiar with but i'll, I'll keep you updated it's obviously doing something and it's doing the most it's done so far since I've had it in this environment that's kind of really warm, really humid. So yeah, fingers crossed, I'll let you know. And then this is another one that I got from Green Spaces ID. This is an Anthurium Silver Blush, which is a beautiful plant, but I did have to chop back quite a bit after I'd filmed that video. It's very robust and did travel very well, but some of the, the newer growth, once it had been potted up, 
uh, for about four days just started to kind of wilt, shrivel, go a bit yellow and I just kind of thought to myself right okay I'm gonna give it a good chop back kind of I've actually put it in a terracotta pot as you can see as well just keep it in here in the rehab zone and hope that this does it some good so yeah touch wood at the moment it's looking happy and healthy fingers crossed it stays that way um but yeah so that is that's that little rehab shelf there um I say rehab shelf some of them aren't rehab plants but that is that one and then moving up to the next level I've got again I said I wasn't going to talk about propagations this is a fishbone cactus that I'm actually trying to propagate in soil which is something I've never done I've only ever propagated these ones in water but I think because I felt quite confident about the environment I was like maybe it'll take seeing as the mother plant's doing so well in here so yeah I'm just currently propagating that one in soil at the moment and hoping for the best um, and then another little one I've got here, this is uh, Epipremnum pinnatum variegata, I think. Um, Albo variegata, that's it. And yeah, again, hasn't been potted up for that long, but has a nice root system on it. So hopefully it will do well in here. Uh, and then a little aloe vera, which since I've potted up, again, has a nice root system. Since I've potted up, just isn't looking as vibrant. And I know it's not a plant that requires a huge amount of humidity. I just thought it would love the warmth of this unit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just stick with this one, see how it does, hope that it perks up a little bit. Uh, fingers crossed it will, but yeah, I just think it looks so cute. I just think all of them look so sweet in their little baby planters. I used to be such a one for just like my massive plants and now I'm getting so much more into just little ones and I guess it's because I'm running out of room, but yeah, that's that one. And then this is my other bit of the ZZ plant that I divided and showed you before. Uh, not a lot to say about this plant. It's really easy going. It's really lovely, very slow growing, but again, since I've potted it, having it in here, I'm hoping might just encourage it to give me a little bit more new growth than it would have done otherwise. Um, and then here's my philodendron marme, which again was green spaces ID, the Indonesian Im imports. And I'm so happy with how this one's doing. It's really, really, it's starting to look a lot more like a mature leaf because this was the little baby. I had to chop all the other leaves back. This was the little baby leaf that came with the mother plant. And I was a little bit worried about it. It had been a wishlist plant for such a long time. And it's now looking very hopeful. That new growth point down there is kind of bulging even more. So I'm thinking it's going to be good. It's also in pure pond at the moment, not in a pot like a self-watering pot. I'm just kind of watering it normally right now. And that seems to be working. So I'm going to stick with that for now. But yeah, that is that one and then next to it is my variegated string of pearls which I think the last time I showed you this one it was just cuttings I mean I got I think about three cuttings off Etsy of this plant and um it's it's done amazingly I've potted them all up now they all rooted really well and I've just kind of wrapped it around the top layer put some soil over it kind of submerged some of the other nodes in soil and it's starting to and again this is since I've had it in the cabinet it's starting to really kind of fill out so I'm hoping soon that should be a really gorgeous really full plant but we will see we will see it's also in a little hang pot there so I will be able to hang it at some point but yeah there we go, you can see it better. You can just see it's looking really full and healthy and lovely. And then this one's my Peperomia frost, which again was a propagation, started as a propagation and has just responded so well to the grow cabinet. It's become, I feel like it's become a plant, moved away from a baby and turned into a plant in the time it's been in here in the last three weeks. It's just doing so, so, so well. I mean, yeah, if you look back on some of my videos of it from a couple of months ago, you'd be like, what? That's insane. Um, but it's just such a beautiful plant. I love, I mean, the same with my Brantianum here, such beautiful kind of silvery, silvery blue leaves. They just almost don't look real. I'm just obsessed with them. It's such a beautiful color. I love it. Um, but yes, Brantianum uh, chopped back quite recently. I did show you this one. This is one that has stayed in the grow cabinet. Um, but it's doing well there. I'm really happy with how it's doing. Along with the Syngonium Albo that was also in here before. But if you saw my first one, you can probably tell the amount of new growth it's produced in these last three weeks. I've got a new leaf down there, another one on the way. I've got this beautiful new leaf just here that again has another one, which I'm a little bit worried about. Because again, this is the plant that I had to chop back so many times because it stopped giving me any green and was just giving me white and they were just all dying off. 
and I am scared that that is going to be another completely white leaf. I really hope it's not, but I feel like maybe it is. So we might have to prepare to start that fun journey all over again of chopping it back and hoping for the best. But yeah, I love that plant still. It's gorgeous. My mother plant's still downstairs and doing well, but I'm hoping that one will kind of keep going in there and then maybe put it on a moss pole at some point. I don't know. Um, and then I've got my little spider plant here, my variegated spider plant, which I really love. It's it's one of my favourite plants. Like I know so many people have such a love-hate relationship with spider plants and I never really used to kind of care about them that much. It was not that I didn't like them. It was not that I loved them. I just wasn't that fussed. And oh, wow, that's a very loud low plane. Um, but this one has just really kind of restored my love for them. Um, and yeah, so that's, that is that one. And then moving up to the top level, my jewel orchids, oh, I just have to turn this a little bit. Uh, my jewel orchids doing really, really well in here. It's kind of really filling out. Um, I'll just actually spin it a little bit so it can get a little bit more like, but um, yeah, really filling out. It's got a lot of new growth coming at the top here. And before I put it in here, it was really quite slow and seems to have suddenly sped up and I haven't actually fertilized this one yet either. So I'm hoping that it's just because it loves the environment it's in and it will continue to do this. I'm also very tempted to put this one in a terrarium at some point. I wanted to create a jewel orchid terrarium and I'm not sure whether or not to do it, but yeah, at some point maybe I will. But I just love its leaves so, 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 so much. They're so beautiful. Um, but yeah, next is my Pilia peperomioides that I propagated in my Pilia video. It had a really good root system on it, so I decided to pot it up. Again, it's another one of my little minis. Um, but yeah, it seems to be doing well so far. I think I potted it up about a week ago or something. And yeah, I'll keep you updated. It did start to have little baby leaves coming out by the roots as well. So I'm hoping that in the next kind of few weeks or so in this environment, it'll start kind of popping up and becoming a new plant. But again, we'll let you know. This is the one that I am really, really, really excited about. So this is my Anthurium clarinervium seedling, the one that was doing the best that I potted up. And I, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen the other day, I was like, oh my goodness, there's another little leaf coming up from, from the original kind of big leaf. And it has just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And look at that, it is just gorgeous. I'm I think it's still going. I don't think that's it kind of finished going. Um, and I'm hoping that now, now that one's come out, it'll kind of, the process will speed up a bit because I know sometimes it just takes it a while to get going. And when it does go, it's like, Poof. so, so yeah, I'm very, very, very excited about that. I can see the lovely white veins kind of starting to appear and it's just beautiful. And also like whenever you look at seedlings and stuff like that or propagations or anything, I was just looking at it and I'm like, wow, I'm like, you wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for me and then I give myself a pat on the back and I feel all good and glowy so yeah that's how I'm feeling whenever I look at that plant hence why I just kind of stand here all the time like ah oh, I love it um but yes and then propagations which I mean Brantianum pink princess won't talk about too much because I'm going to do a separate video oh I've just noticed a new leaf so this is the little varicosum that has a leaf there that does need chopping but um, this is the little varico varicosum that I started as a little chunk um, a few months back and it was completely accidental. I didn't even mean to really propagate this plant. I just stuck it in some water and hope for the best. And as you can see, it's done well. Got a new growth point coming, new leaf unfurling there. Um, so yes, I'm very excited about that. Yay. Uh, and then I've got a Cebu Blue that is fairly recently potted up as well. Nice root system. So it's also got some fenestration, which makes me so, so, so happy. Um, but yeah, it seems to be doing well. But as I say, it's the only leaf it's supporting at the moment. So I'm hoping that continues. And then my Hoya Waetii tricolour here. Uh, has actually just in these last few days started giving me some new growth which I'm so happy about because this one was just really dormant for such a long time and I was like oh god is it gonna die off like what's what's gonna happen but it's as I say since it started its life in the cabinet it's been doing really well so yeah it's so I just love all the colors in it it's so pretty it's almost kind of like each, each leaf's been painted it's lovely um 
and then my Hoya Parasitica Black Margin here, which has got these two little, up here, these two little new leaves. And I was actually uh, showing my mum the other night and I was like, mum, I was like, look at these leaves now and wait a few days and then look back at them. And they start as a little kind of pinprick of leaves. And that was, that was two days ago. And now they're getting quite big and I can guarantee they'll be about that size within a week. It's just amazing how it does it. It's kind of like anthurium leaves. You could literally, if you had the patience, you could stand here and watch them grow. You'd have to have a lot of patience for that, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that one's doing really well. It's loving cabinet life and I'm loving it in my cabinet. And then my Alocasia Silver Dragon here, which oh, which is doing really, really, really well. This is a new leaf as well. New leaf in the last couple of weeks. And the thing that I found as well with my plants in here, not only are they growing so much quicker, but the growth is maturing a lot faster. Like for example, this leaf, if this hadn't been in the grow cabinet, I feel it probably would have taken at least a week to fully harden up. And it hardens up literally in the case of a couple of days. And yeah, it's doing so, so, so well. It's really starting to look less like a baby plant nowadays and more like an actual full mature proper alocasia plant well that was hard to say you know what i mean but yeah i'm really really proud of it really impressed with how it's doing loving it so yes um then these ones haven't changed since the last time i set this up oh i've missed some i've missed a couple um that's just a golden pothos cutting um, that I potted again, propagating in soil. I'm not sure how that'll work. I know lots of people have had success with propagating in soil. I have just always had a much lower success rate. Again, similar with my string of pearls, non-variegated, just standard that I'm propagating there in soil. Let you know, keep you updated with those, but that's just how they are at the moment. Although this one, the string of pearls is growing. Like I've been measuring it by looking at uh, just there where it meets the edge of the leaf and the other day it only came to there and now it's gone whoop so it's it's still growing so we'll see whether or not it takes but then these three at the back this is my Hoya Crimson Queen which again the last time I showed you it these two little leaves were about that big and I was like look it's trying to reach the light and now they are just huge and they're doing really well and it looks really happy um, my fishbone cactus, this is the mother plant of the little propagation that I started from here, but yeah, it's, it's loving it. It's also kind of got this sun stress from the grow light, which I'm loving. Also, the grow light has stayed in place. They all have. <laughs> that is that is a very, very good thing. I'm very happy about it, um, but it's all, all is good in that department. So I think I'm just going to leave it like this for the time being. Um, but yeah, my uh, fishbone cactus is doing really well in here. I love this plant. Um, I'm really hoping that it's going to just continue to grow and I did repot it as well so yeah continue to grow um, get as big as possible because I really want a huge one but I'm not willing to invest any money in a huge one when I've got one growing here um, yes that's that one and then here I've got my Hoya Australis Lisa which actually does have a little growth point just there I was going to say hasn't really done anything in a while but it is starting to do something just oh, where's my finger just there um so fingers crossed that starts kind of lining a little bit but i just i mean those leaves are just absolutely beautiful they're almost like uh go golden green uh global green sorry pothos leaves but so much prettier they just i love the waxy texture of hoya leaves i just absolutely love them um but yeah so that is god it's bright the cabinet as as it currently stands and I've had so many thoughts about how I'm going to do this differently when I move and how, like, for example, my rehab section down here, how I'm going to maybe incorpor incorporate like a couple of layers of rehab and then some purely for propagations and tropical plants and maybe even like a little acclimation zone for imports or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of thoughts, so I will, I will keep you updated. Um, but for now, let's just close the door. Um, and it says the humidity's right, it's because I've opened all of the um, windows to film this. Oh yeah, the humidity's dropping rapidly. I'll get that on in a second and get it back up because I usually try to keep this at, at, at least kind of 60 to 70% and I mean, God, that's high, but yeah, they all seem happy at the moment. Um, mess, 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 mess. Uh, I've got lots of perlite and pond and orchid bark and this is my fiddly fig that was downstairs for me for ages and 
I moved it upstairs because all of the leaves down here got completely whacked off by Yoli's tail and as you can see there's still quite a lot of rips and tears and stuff and I've kind of just come to terms with it. I'm really sad that she's not as full as she used to be but it is what it is. The growth that I've got is healthy and I'm hoping this summer she'll start to give me some lovely new growth so that's where we're at with it all at the moment but I know she's not kind of looking her best right now. And then also, I would have forgotten to show you this one, but I will show you. Um, hang on, I need to put the phone down for a second. So in here, I've got a little Monstera Dubia cutting, which was sent to me by a lovely girl that I started chatting to on Instagram. Oh, wow. I've actually just noticed up there it's going crazy in these last few days. Um, and yeah, I probably need to go ahead and pop this one up. It has got some really good roots on it, uh, which I'm pretty sure, are, yeah, they're pretty attached to the moss. I'm not going to pull too hard um but yeah it's doing well so I need to get that potted and I've also in here just put my um uh, one of the oh, what do you call it Anthurium clarinavian seedlings which has got a really good root system on it if you can kind of see yeah you can kind of see in there um but I moved it from the other propagation box just because uh I wanted to clear that one out and start again and that was the only thing left in there so I thought I'd kind of group these two up at their one end of the <laughs> of the ice cream pot um but yeah I don't really know why I didn't fill the whole thing with moss to be honest I think I was just in a bit of a rush uh but that's that's where they're at, at the moment and this floor as well is heated not obviously at the moment it doesn't need to be but overnight it stays at kind of a steady temperature so it's almost like having them on a heat mat even though they're not on a heat mat um and that ends clear as well so they get natural light bit of heat there that's where that's where I've got them at the moment um, but then I've got my pothos plant, my golden pothos, which you've seen lots of times before. And then this one is, what was it called? Ace Cananthus marmorata, I think it was the lipstick plant. And since I've had it, it's not doing badly, but you can kind of see, like, it's almost, I mean, I thought at first it was pests. I had it in isolation, I was like, what's going on? But it's almost like with some of the leaves, the colour's almost being stripped away and I'm not entirely sure what it is yet. Um, it has been treated. I can't see any signs of pests, but I, I mean, it almost looks like sun damage as well, but actually it's in the one corner that doesn't really receive any direct sun whatsoever. So I'm a little bit confused about what's going on there. I'm gonna continue to try and figure it out but yes it's still a very beautiful plant it's still on the whole looks in fairly good condition I think it might just need a thorough prune back maybe a root check uh and then we will see how it goes um pothos uh, right only a couple more so then the hoya gracilis which I've shown you before as well which I absolutely adore it's such a sturdy kind of robust plant um and I'm going to move it over to show you my final clarinervium and um, this is the one that I said was uh, in the female stage at the moment and receptive so I will bring this one down here so you know how much I love a clarinervium this one is just absolutely beautiful and this is the one that if I could pollinate one I would 100% choose it to be this plant because it's so well established it's obviously got very good kind of energy reserves and I feel like this is the one that would be more likely to do well if I was to pollinate it but up here on the inflorescence, you can see, oh, if it'll focus, there we go. You can see the little, um, the, I mean, that's, what's it called? Sap, dew, whatever it's called. It's basically the stuff that it puts out, which means that it's receptive and it's able to absorb the pollen. So if I had pollen to hand now, I'd be able to take that and I'd be able to wipe it over or dress it over the uh, spade, the spadex, and it would hopefully at some point, if it took, produce berries and then I'd be able to grow other clarinerviums from it, from it. But the pollen that I collected did not work. I basically put it in, put it in the freezer in a sealed sandwich bag and somehow water got in there and it was ruined. So I'm, I'm having to wait a little bit longer, which is really annoying. And I've actually got up here, this is a, one of the COVID tubes that you put your little, um, swabs into to test and what I'm planning on doing this time I've seen someone else do it this way and it seemed to work well but I'm going to collect the pollen when it goes into the male phase and starts producing pollen I'm going to collect it in this using a little brush then I'm going to seal that put it in a freezer bag with some like little silicon gel packs you know those things that always come with your clothes and stuff like that do that and then I'm going to try and store it that way so that hopefully next time and hopefully not too far in the future I will be able to do it and it will work but yes 
Oh, you can see my reflection there. I am warm. Um, right, well guys, I hope, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was entertaining and I hope you enjoyed my messy pile of jungle stuff as it is at the moment. Um, as I say, I am gonna do a full house plant tour at some point when I've moved along with my propagation room and along with a few exciting things that I've never shown on my channel as well, but I'm kind of saving. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day. Or oh, before I do my little outro bit, also if anyone's got any comments or questions, as always, let me know in the box below and I will get back to you. But yeah, have a lovely day, everyone. Enjoy the beautiful, beautiful weather and I will see you in the next video.